All righty. We out here. And so the streamer showdown goes. Max should be on in just a moment. And then we are ready to rock. Let's take a look at what the first deck's going to be. Now, Max has got altered band control on his end of things, so if you like watching control, check it out. On my side, we're going to run through the whole gauntlet, starting with some Simic Cauldron, because, frankly, I want to know if this deck is actually good, and we can trust each other to be gentlemen and scoop once the infinite combo happens, so I don't have to worry about that scenario where we sit there for 19 minutes while I try to click and give myself Carpal Tunnel. Hey, buddy. Having a little bit of an issue going live with the uh, Streamlabs program, so just hang tight. Ah, <laughs> uh, good old slobs. Good old slobs. And I, I pay the premium, right? So I can't just cancel it and do something <laughs> else. <laughs> That's how um, it goes. How it goes. It's all good, my man. It all has issues. See if it wants to work for me this time. Who's lurking out there in the chat tonight? Feel free to say hi. Stop on by. It's going to be a moment. How does this deck win? That is a good question. So there's an infinite combo in this that involves Agatha's Soul Cauldron putting a plus one plus one counter on Sleep Cursed Fairy. And if it does so by removing a card from a graveyard known as Cami of Whispered Hopes, then you have an infinite mana combo because Sleep Cursed Fairy untaps for two mana and generates three mana. I think you can see how that works. There's the infinite loop, and then you're just trying to find a Realm Scorcher to very quickly ping for infinite damage because you have infinite mana. So that's the combo. I don't exactly know if it does anything outside of that. It worries me greatly that that's the only way to win. I mean, I guess you could beat them to death with some fairies. It doesn't seem efficient, but I don't know. It took ninth place at a fucking world championship, so who am I to question it? You know what I mean? Either way, this is not the only version of this deck that's running around. This is just the one from Worlds. And I'm not entirely sure I understand all the pieces of this, but that's why we're going to play it first. Because, frankly, I could use a little practice in understanding exactly what this archetype needs to function, what keeps it rolling, you know? I've already started revising it. I know, revising blind, a dumb thing to do. I did it anyway. Because I'm really curious about this card. The fact that... Uh, it already gets plus one, plus one counters for itself, so it's just passively good with Agatha's Soul Cauldron is kind of interesting to me. The fact that it mills is also very interesting to me. And the fact that it also can hate out the mirror I thought was intriguing. And it's a one drop, which this deck could use. So I, I kind of pushed it that way, and then this uh, was courtesy of good old Noble Murloc, this Vile Spawn Spider. The ability to give every creature with a plus one, plus one counter the ability to sack to make a shitload of insects. That intrigues me as a like an alt win where you can just go wide with insects. Don't know if it's any good. Gonna try it, though. Plus, it passively mills you, so like that's kind of nice. But that's where we'll start. From there, we'll probably move on. Uh, double check a few different pieces from Esper Legends that took down Worlds to Esper Midrange that took second to Reed Duke's Domain to Simon Nielsen's Azoria Soldiers. And if we have time, we'll eventually get into uh, Golgari. And this is my personal build, which I'm sure many people will look at and be like, four Shellys, four Glissas, what about the end? I don't expect to see it. Haven't seen it in a minute, don't expect to see it. Card's good, but it's not great. And this is much more of the... I don't know. We're doing okay with this build. I'm actually 2-1 and one against Domain in, in, like, Diamond Tier 1 with it. I can't tell if it's actually the right call, though. Because if Domain's going to be around in those numbers, why why bother playing a matchup that's tough when you can just ranch it with something like Esper Midrange? Or presumably Azori Soldiers, frankly. There's other ways to go with it, but... We shall see. For everybody watching, if there are issues with the audio mix, please let me know. I know y'all like to lurk, and I love it. I love it. Don't feel pressure. You don't have to come to the chat. I mean, feel free if you'd like to. I always enjoy chit-chatting. Get it? 
but it would be lovely to know that this audio mix is working because I only stream once a week. Everything else I do recordings and I can test the audio ahead of time. This shit, not so much. And if you're wondering what the invisible can is, that is what Sprite looks like in front of a green screen. I know, right? Fantastic. Oh. Now, if you look at this revised Golgari list, a thing you're going to see is all the enchantment hate. So much enchantment hate. All the enchantment hate. And more enchantment hate. Because enchantments are fucking everywhere. No, actually, the shirt's not green. The shirt's just uh, black. So it looks kind of green screeny. Hey, what up, Reynos? Good to see you again. Either way, this is probably where I'd be if I was going to go into a tournament tomorrow, which we're getting pretty close to the pizza box open this weekend. And I will see if I can play that. God, I hope I don't have to work. That'd be lovely. It's been a minute since I've gotten to actually compete in one of those. But... I don't know. There's also something to be said for this. Like, this Esper mid-range list, by all means, probably should have won Worlds. This list is so well thought out. <laughs> I was playing it a little bit on the ladder for fun earlier today, and it went undefeated. It is really, really hard to deal with. Even the mirror was not as intuitive as I thought it would be. Like, for instance, Chad, if you look at this, where do you think you sideboard to get the mirror match where you want it to go? Like, honest opinion, where do you, where do you think the sideboard goes? Because I'm very curious. Yeah, yeah, he he did get rolled by draws and mulligans in the uh, finals. That was that was tough to watch. That Esper Legends player ran hot as the sun, <laughs> like hot as the fucking sun. <laughs> okay, if you're gonna sideboard for an Esper mid range mirror, since I haven't done a whole lot in the way of sideboard guides lately, might as well just toss you out some thoughts on this one. I would take the two cut downs and I would take all three shieldreds and I'd board them out in the Esper mirror. I would go into two Kaidos uh, for additional draw engines, an anoint with affliction, and two destroy evils. My reasoning on it is the things that scare you the most are going to be Rafines, Shelly's, Wedding Announcements, and Virtue of Loyalties, of which destroy evil hits all of them. Anoint with affliction hits the Rafines, Skitters, and Denix as clean removal, which is lovely. Cut down gets outclassed the moment a wedding announcement flips, basically. And Kaido is going to be card advantage where Shelly's are just going to get answered one for one. And they should have answers because the go for the throats are going to get spread out among only that's not even 10 creatures. You know what I mean? You're not spending them on Denix, not unless you absolutely have to. So that's pretty much where I'd shift things. For the same reason, I'd, I'm not sure on the second Elspeth smite. My guess is this can be cut for another anoint with affliction. But I'm still kind of back and forth on that as well. I also have no idea why we need Farewell in this list. This does not seem like the list for Farewell. I, I'll i have to play more with it to understand. But make no mistake, this is the deck that probably should should have won Worlds, in my opinion. And would have, but for variants. God, it's such a good... It's a masterpiece. It has like three cards, if not four cards, that should be banned in it, which tells you everything you need to know about why it's a great deck. You know, Rafines, Wedding Announcements, Wandering Waifus, Shellys. All four of those probably should have gotten the ban hammer by now. None of them did. None of them are likely to at this point. Flagship Mythics are a thing, and there's one, two, three of them, along with a, a beautiful rare that is comparably... Uh, it, it's comparable in power level to Fable. It's not there, obviously, but it's comparable. Anyway, Max is doing a, a quick restart here, folks, and then we will get the showdown going. I apologize. Technical difficulties. Shit happens, homie, you know? Oh, my. Only one Plaza of Heroes in this list. It's kind of wild to me. All right, let's take a look at some other lists while we're here. This is Aurea Soldier's list is so smart. I still don't like the Wear Fox Bodyguard, though. This just seems wrong. But every other part of this deck seems so good. <laughs> it's so difficult to interact with this deck. 
I'm also a little curious on whether or not Regal Bunnicorn is a necessary component or if we're just being greedy by embracing that go-wide strategy and trying to push it even harder with the bunny. I don't know. It, it feels greedy, Chad. It really does. Like, what are we playing against that doesn't have an answer to a vanilla creature? You know what I mean? Like, is how is this better than the Lord when you get down to it? Because you're going to go wide either way, right? But this is like go wide, except you still want to concentrate your power in one creature versus just spreading out the power level across the board and forcing them to answer it twice. I don't know. And it's the soldier. I don't know. I'm I'm back and I'm a little back and forth on that one, clearly, because I think we could fit like three lords in here if we get rid of the bodyguard and the two bunnicorns. <sighs> Maybe we could get four if we cut one Lunark veteran. No, nah, we probably need the veterans. I think we need ten one drops, and that's the point of this for the knight errant convo on turn three. That's got to be the point of it. You want to get a consistent turn three convo if you need it. Oh, yet another deck showing the power of make disappear into wedding announcement. You guys remember when it was make disappear into fable, and everybody got tired of it. My guess is we're going to end up there. Maybe not today, but fucking soon. Uh, Domain by Duke. This is a beautiful list. This really is. I'm really curious if we actually need that second courier's briefcase. I absolutely agree. We don't want uh, the ossifications, though. Oh, for real? Nice. It's a good deck. It, it is. I think there's a few slots we can tune around and mess around with, but this build was clever in a lot of ways that other ones were not. I kind of want to shift out a Courier's Briefcase for another go for the throat and a Virtue of Persistence for another go for the throat and just embrace the fact that go for the throat is... The best way to check the early interaction, but maybe maybe we don't have to. Hard to say for me. I mean, you look at this deck, and it is essentially Abzan splashing red and blue because you need domain and for Archangel slash Atraxa, but it's basically an Abzan list. Post board, you have some blue that matters, I suppose. That obstinate Bailoth in there is pretty good too. I have gotten fucked by that one time. It was not pleasant. And then, of course, ye old Esper Legends. I still hate this deck. <laughs> I get why it's good. <sighs> the fucking Skrelves. This is an interesting iteration, too. Shaving down to two Ronas playing the full three Fairy Masterminds, and then that 3-1 split with Go for the Throat and Make Disappear. It's very interesting. I'm not entirely sure why they even play a copy of Make Disappear in this main board. I mean, I guess it gives you three Counterspell options, but with Thalia, that seems very clunky. I can't imagine that's, like, the best way to run this, right? The rest of it makes sense, though. Like, yeah, Lord Skitter, Rafine, Shelly, Urtai. Those numbers all make sense. Eschewing Adeline kind of makes sense, too, at this point. Skrull, Thalia, Denic, all make sense. The two, Rona, the three Fairy Mastermind. I can see the 3-2 split um, with up the Beanstalk making a massive appearance lately. Fairy Mastermind's just the best answer to that, weirdly, is like, you get cards, then I get cards. Maybe we want the fourth Mastermind more than we want the second Rona, as weird as that is to say. I have a feeling that could be true. And then the question is, do we want a 3-1 split and go for the throat and make disappear? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe we want one more make disappear over the third go for the throat. Maybe we just want four go for the throats. I'm also really unclear that we have a surge of salvation and a blot out. Like the rest of the sideboard here makes a lot of sense. You know, you, you shove your cut downs in over your screlves, probably. And then you can push out Urtai's and Lord Skitters for wedding. I don't know. Like, you can get grindy with it. You can go low to the ground and deal with other low to the ground decks. And then you have three more counters to really deal with those ramp decks. 
but Blot Out seems like such a strange choice, and so does Surge of Salvation. I guess Surge makes sense if you're really expecting Mono Red, but at that point, why not a Knockout Blow? You know what I mean? Why why not uh, fucking Sunset Revelry? Anything, you know what I mean? Like, Surge of Salvation just seems kind of like an odd choice to aim for in that. And Blot Out, similarly... I don't know, Chad. If you if you understand why these cards are in there, Chad, if you watched an interview that I missed during Worlds, shout it out, because I would love to know what logic line I'm missing here. It drives me nuts when I can't figure out why a deck is built the way it is. You know what I mean? And this one feels... I, I feel like I have a pretty good grasp of most of it. But there are definitely pieces that I, I sit and I look at this and I think, ah, I'm not sure why. And that's troubling, because I need to know why. That's part of, you know, playing this game at a higher level. You got to understand the logic behind how everybody else was building shit so you can figure out where you need to make changes and what you can and can't touch. Otherwise, you just kind of willy-nilly shift things around and all of a sudden the deck's fucked. And I have done that many times in my younger years and at least a few this year. Pretty sure I upgraded this. Yeah, okay. So this was a remix on Jim Davis's list. We shifted a few slots. I, I don't agree with Extraction Specialist in the main or really in the deck at all at this point. Um, I get the point of it. The problem is that Denik exists and is in heavy numbers. It's in it's like four of in most of these Esper lists, which turns off Extraction Specialist. And you don't have a lot of ways to deal with Denik. So I would rather push through and play things like Anointed Peacekeeper, which are going to stutter stuff. Like you can hit a Skrelv into Thalia into Anointed Peacekeeper, that is that is a lot for your opponent to try to get through. Like they might have stutter stepped them two or even three turns. That's a lot. I've locked people out of games with anointed peacekeeper and that exact curve out and just gotten two extra turns to compound the board, say which this deck does readily with Adeline, Virtue of Loyalty, Spellbook Binders. Like it's really well set up for that. I also do not understand whether or not like do we really need three Invasion of Gobicons? That feels greedy, right? I don't know. Oh, I also cut out the extra Virtual Loyalty for the uh, Destroy Evil. We need more ways to interact with enchantments and with Sheldry. Shelly. Shieldred. Alrighty. Well, we're uh, still waiting on Max here. It's going to be a moment. Let's play a quick best one for fun so we can try out a weird concept here, okay? It's called Hexaman's Rakdo Sacrifice. This is supposed to be the uh, Fling Rakdos deck. Don't really know if it's actually any good, but it uses Cacophony Scamp, Pump Spells, and then Callus Cell Sword to triple the damage. If it works, it's going to be fantastic. If it doesn't work, it you know will be like most decks I expect. I finally got the lands I love, by the way, chat. I'm very stoked. It's been an amazing week. Any week where I get to play with the lands I love. That's all I need. Uh, hmm. I think we're going this route. Yeah. Weirdly, I, I kind of want to roll this way. We're up against Domain. Let's put up a lot of pressure really, really quickly. Probably Domain. Possibly Domain. Nope, maybe just Esper. Well, fuck it. Whatever. Should we ranch him? That always feels good. Let's decline that. Check this out.
And that's how you went on turn three. <laughs> this deck's so dumb. <laughs> they didn't even get to play. A th- they didn't even get to play a spell. <laughs> I I would caution chat. This is not a reliable deck. I've already played it a couple times before this just for fun. Like you can get hands like that where you're like, how the fuck do I even lose? But you can also get hands that just do nothing, and so it's it's kind of a wild thing. Yeah, it was gross, right, Dabo? <laughs> Fucking turn three, and they didn't even get to play a third land. Oh. And then you see hands like this. Like, this hand falls apart the moment they interact with that. I feel like play with fire is just a mistake in this deck. It does. You just need a creature instead. We might tune this up a little bit while we're waiting for Max. Look at that beautiful mountain. Thank you, John Avon. You to real. You to true, true. All right, show me... Oh, Fuck. It's not ideal either, but we'll take it. Uh, we'll, we'll take it. Holy balls, this isn't going to go well. Okay. So here's the part where they interact and we cry. Uh, no worries, I see. What happens, happens. You cannot control everything on these. I understand that. Let's see if we can catch him just looking. Like, we're not even... We're just going to be like, all right, if you block, it's unfavorable. All right, well, clearly nobody wants to learn a lesson today, so... And turn four. Fling. Still good. Okay, play with fire sucks. Let's change that, chat. We can do something better than that, right? I still don't think this is a real deck, but we, we can do better than that. Yeah, I think it's honest to God just more creatures. Like, we don't have room for burn in this deck. We just need more threats. Okay, so threat, threat, threat. Awesome, fuck that. Yeah, we probably only need four, six, eight. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, let's see what we have as we'll drop threats. Creature. Uh, yeah, we're not, okay, we are we can't do black. We, we don't have enough ways to actually do that, although I'm really tempted to do Okiba Reckoner Raids. Yeah, but that's going to fuck up the rest. We're literally just splashing for this. Yeah, okay. This is a mono-red deck. We're just splashing black in case we have to hard cast this for some weird reason. So it's probably Emberth Veterans here. Yeah. Although well, part of me really wants the Phoenix Chick. Part of me really wants the Phoenix Chick just to go... Not- oh, Lizard Blades. Yeah, why are we not running Lizard Blades? We'll extend it up one. Lizard Blades feels like right right where we want to be. Fucking double strike with all this pump. And I've been like waiting for a deck that matters for Lizard Blades for a long time. Though I'm still tempted to play Phoenix Chick. Let's see. Haste. 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 Fucking not haste. Like, do we need Charming Scoundrel? Or do we just want to go... Like, do we shift Lizard Blades over Charming Scoundrel, play the Phoenix Chicks, and go that route? Like, is Charming Scoundrel actually correct? We're on 21 lands. Do we need 21 lands? All right, chat. Help me figure it out. Where are we cutting? Where are we cutting? This deck's silly. I don't think we can lose the Rages or the Antagonizes. We might be able to lose a Stolen Vitality and a Land. And then dump out, like, maybe we can only do a couple Lizard Blades. Lizard, Lizard's kind of slow. I agree with that. 
but I did want one more thread. So, all right, so this, this is as linear as this deck can fucking get, right? We are just get them dead red. Do we even have, like, is this even a deck that cares about a sideboard even in best of three? You know what I mean? What the fuck is Rotisserie Elemental? I mean, that's kind of cute. I don't think it's good, though. I just think it's cute. I want to play it for the art, I guess. Oh, Cemetery Gatekeeper, if only you were actually a decent card. You're not. And is there anything else that's kind of interesting? Like, is there a way to board this that's actually relevant? Do we want Smoldering age Eggs? I don't think we have enough instants and sorceries for that to matter. This would be interesting if we wanted to push in. What, what do we have for blue-red lands? Oh, for fuck's sake. Ah, two out of three are tapped. If we had Shivan Reef and like a Spire Bluff Canal, the fast land, I'd say let's let's fuck with some blue cards. You know, like let's play that Scalding Viper in that scenario off the sideboard because that could be some spice. But lo, it was not to be happening. Did we get anything out of Wilds of Eldraine for this? I mean, we got the Cell Sword, so yeah. Yeah, the rest of this seems like it's just a little too slow. Hmm. Yeah, like this is a deck that I just don't even know that it cares about anything. You know what? I'll put four of these fuckers in the sideboard, though. This is the kind of deck that goes one mana blow up Shelly. And I'll I'll go a step further, chat. I'll put in four Torch the Towers. For sometimes one must kill and exile the Denic Pious to win the game. If ever there was a deck that lost to Denic Pious, it's this fucking deck. <laughs> so. Oh, God. This deck still feels like ass, but whatever. Let's rock another best one real quick. I think Max should be getting pretty close to getting his tech stack under control. At least we hope so. Thoughts and prayers, chat. Spelled T-H-O-T. Thoughts and prayers. Yeah, I need to zoom it in just a little bit more. There we go. Okay. See? Now it's perfect. Fucking rabbit battery. Counter-Strike 2 came out a couple hours ago, a million plus players. I never played Counter-Strike, but that makes sense that it would be popular. All right, what are we up against? Doctor, things I can't even pronounce or understand. No idea what these symbols mean. Chad, if you understand what these symbols are, feel free to let me know because I have no fucking clue. We're just going to play a couple of uh, rabbit batteries, which isn't a euphemism for something else, but sure does look like it, doesn't it? There's a cut down. There it goes. Yep. Kind of figured that was happening, which is why we did double rabbit battery instead of charming scoundrel. Oh, that's rude. Uh, yeah, I don't really care about that that much. Kind of curious what happens if we do this. Okay, we had to know, right? Interesting.
Oh, and there it goes. And from here, it gets worse. But we got motherfucking lizard blades, right? Slizzard. Guess what this battery is about to attach to. You can trade with the charming scoundrel. Don't give a fuck. Weird choice there. Don't know why you blocked the Kamano. Kind of weird. Oh, there's a Shelly. And that doesn't do jack shit against Shelly. This is the awkward part. Kind of needed an antagonize there to push through. Really, actually, any of our uh, pump spells would have pushed us. Now we get to lose the horrible way. Okay, maybe not the worst way. Unless it's a wandering emperor, and then, yeah, it's going to go badly quickly. Okay, looks like Streamlabs might just be down. Oh, for fuck's sake, Virtue of Persistence. Well, that makes me look a little more foolish with this now, doesn't it? Come on, swing with Shield Druid, you'll be fine. You can possibly backfire, right? Da, 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 da. Okay, second thing I want to find out, if I reconfigure it this way, does it actually get rid of it? It does not. Okay, so we just made a terrible error earlier. That's fine. We make terrible errors all the time. That is part of playing Magic. We are going to get our ass kicked on this matchup. Holy fuck. Yes, we are. So Virus Beetle Besiege. Can't imagine this is actually that great of a deck, but it, it sure exists, chat. I tell you what, if we're not going to be able to do a streamer showdown tonight because uh, Streamlabs decided to shit the bed, at the very least, you can watch me try to battle my way into Mythic because I am exactly one match out. So once we finish with this, we can we can actually play a real deck and get after it. Yeah, this is definitely anti this deck. <laughs> it's just sitting there with the Shelly like, what you gonna do? And now, I think everybody is very aware of why this card is such a problem. <laughs> the entire aggro deck held at bay and completely recovers on the back of one card. Okay, I'm not gonna make everybody watch this. This isn't gonna go well. Let's, let's just move on. I don't waste time when I know the defeat is inevitable, and that one motherfucking is. All right, chat, let's get to the ladder. We are one win out. Okay. Oh, how hard do we want to go, chat? Fuck it, let's go hard and play Esper midrange. It does such a great job of making everybody else regret playing this format. Ladder hype, try hard. Fuck yeah, Frodo Vest, let's do it. Da -da 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 -da. All right, Esper mid. You're like within a couple cards of being probably the perfect Esper mid range list. Shout out to the man that made it, Mr. Kasaka. Don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Hopefully, I'm not butchering it. All right, ladder. Come on now. I think the worst is if you're like one win out of Mythic and you wait like three minutes on the ladder for an opponent and then it hands you somebody in like Platinum and they ranch you. <laughs> you're just sitting there like, ah, we were so close. We're against Dark Snake. Okay, fair enough.
well, I don't know, maybe my opponent won't show up and that'll be the match. Every once in a while that happens. Nope. Okay, they're here. This hand looks fine. Shattered Sanctum down first. Dr. K-Snake. Because <laughs> there's no period, Dabo. <laughs> we'll keep this. This is acceptable. Throat, Skitter, Shelly, or Emperor. That's not about Curve Out. Oh, and we even have a Virtue so that we have a nice alt play on their turn. Hard to say no to that. Oh, and even perfect mana to go with it. Okay. So it's Jund we're up against. Yeah, we'll go this route. Not the best setup for game one here. But we'll go hard. Yep. And this right here closes out the idea that we can win by just playing counter spells without pressure. Like, we have to get up and moving right meow. Time to go over the top as hard as we can and pray for a lack of sunfall pretty quickly. Odds are we're going to go Ottawara past the turn, make them think we have a counter spell so that hopefully they can't pull the sunfall end of turn, Wandering Emperor. Yep, there's the Topiary Stomper. It's not up yet, but next turn with Invasion of Zendikar it will be, or they'll have Sunfall or Archangel. Those are the three lines that we know. Oh, Christ. It's going to be Sunfall. We do not have the second Black Source mana here either. That is a fucking problem. Okay. So it's called Committing to the Moment. This does put on some decent pressure. It goes pretty fucking hard, pretty fucking fast. I don't hate that. And now they're sitting here thinking, oh god, there's Urtai or Make Disappear. What do we play into the first round of counters? I mean, in a way, I'm happy this card exists because it makes green relevant again. And in, on the other hand, this seems kind of absurd. <laughs> Once you get into modern with all the free spells, this gets even more absurd. Jesus. Like Furies, Solitudes. It's gonna it's gonna be a thing. They've got a lot of options here. But uh Dark Snake needs to figure out how they're gonna handle this. Okay. Looking like it's gonna be a casual scenario so far. Do you just Archangel and blow out the 2-2? Two -two? I mean, that puts you in a pretty good position, frankly. What do you hit? Okay. Six lands. We can go Emperor here. Oh my god, we're not quite there. Oh my god, we needed the land. That drives me nuts. All right. We have to kill the Archangel. Yeah, we're going to have to kill the Archangel, play out the Denic, and plus to make sure that's a 4-4. Four, four. This is not ideal, but it sure as shit is happening. Oh, right. Denic prevents me from grabbing that. Not that it matters. They don't have reanimation. And this right here is us saying you better have a way around it. Like, you need Atraxa or Sunfall this turn. Nothing else is going to be... Like, Leyline doesn't matter. Almost nothing else matters here. It's, it's Atraxa or Sunfall. We can trade out here. We're not going to give out Wandering Emperor like that, because Sunfall's happening. Yeah. Yep, that was what I figured. Now, do they have the ley line to go with it? That's the question. 
because the ley line is the key here. Fucking still don't have a... Oh, my God. I'm beginning to feel... I'm beginning to feel it. Where are my black sources? Three Shelley stuck in hand. Virtue stuck in hand. Not a good look. All right. Let's flood the board a little bit again. See where they go. To be fair, they could go Sunfall into Activate, Blowout, Wandering Emperor. Okay, they're not doing that. They just want to swing through at Wandering Emperor, it looks like. Wrong on sequencing. You don't do that pre-combat. Cauldron should look pretty insane. Yeah, I agree with you there. So this is a questionable block. If we don't block, we're presenting uh, lethal potentially. But to be fair, if we do block, we're still presenting lethal under the auspices of Rafine Swings plus a plus one off the Wandering Emperor. And then we play Shelley, they draw, they die. I think the Emperor is the stronger piece to have in play here. And there's no way they have nothing. You know what I mean? Right. There's just, there's no way there's nothing. There's always something. Okay. So we know where they're going. What we draw is going to be critical here. That was not what the fuck we wanted to draw. Okay. Probably going to end up minusing Wandering Emperor and forcing. Yeah. We need another Black Source. Not tapped. Okay. So, do we just minus the Wandering Emperor? Vigilance, haste, push, push. Yeah, I think we're just going to go with creatures here. We want to force them to put on a lot of pressure and swing towards us. Yep, there's the pressure. Like, they could just have three lands in hand, and this is our game for the taking, potentially. We don't know yet. We'll let that one go. What are you going to do? Holy fuck problem they tapped stupidly though they didn't leave the white man up for a uh, ley line okay okay yep we got to play this pre-combat We are here to win motherfucking games. Let's go. So by drawing three, we're going to gain six. Okay. I think we're also at a point where that's going to happen. We need to threaten lethal here with a go for the throat in case they just drop an Atraxa. Yeah. Really needed that to be an untapped black source.
We play this because it actually might end up being the game. We'll see. All right, so let's count it up here. We have 15, 20, 24. As long as we can block here with Shelly, we're in it. They're going to lose. Let's see. Two life here puts them to three. Yeah, I mean, if they have nothing, we win. It's not a bad place to be on game one against this without any counters or anything to really interact with on the early side of the curve. There's no ley line there. That's key. Really wish they were at four so that they could not play any of their big spells, but... So it goes sometimes. They want to attack step two. That's interesting. Okay, in case they have Archangel, we have to block like this. It's got to be Archangel, right? And again, if they have... Um, I think we win. That feels good. Unless they have Archangel. If they have Archangel here, we're fucked, but... Okay, we're no longer fucked. Uh, we 100% win this game. That was... That's cool. Unless they have a way to kill Restless Fortress. You have a beside you? Or go for the throat? Trigger on stack. Boom. We'll take game one. Okay. Enough of that shit. And this is about where it needs to be, yeah. Uh, we probably want that over the Denic. Instant speed matters more here. Um, do we want a Kaido? No, I don't think we do. We're trying to get damage in fast. We're not really trying to grind anything out. Yeah, that seems about right. All right, let's see, chat. Do we pop? Do we pop off into mythic or not? Time to find out. Is this good enough? It's not great. It's not great. If they mulligan, maybe. I don't know. Like, it's lands and spells, but it's a little little rough. Hey, Nerdy Steve. Haven't seen you in a minute, brother. Hope things are going well. This doesn't feel like the right can to keep against Domain, but at the same time, who am I to question the will of the deck? Slash, I, I really want to know if it is too slow. Well, this feels good at least. Eat shit, seed shark. Huzzah. Uh, four mana. Yeah, I think we still have to push this. Like, we need to get our engines up and running. If they have the perfect curve, like, three to four into invasion, and I haven't seen a green source yet, so it'd have to be an untapped one. Yeah! See? That's where we get ahead. I mean, you're not going to leyline bind that fucker. You can leyline bind the wedding announcement, but you waited too long for that, too. Okay. We are in business, bebe. That is fine. I, I don't care about up the beanstalks at all. You can go right up that beanstalk. What you got? Dr. 
or Dark Snake, Doctor K Snake. God damn it, Dabo, you got me on this shit. <laughs> okay, they should have a, a counter for this, right? Like, don't domain decks play some number of negates post board against us? Seems like an awkward place to be, but I could see it happening. No, I mean that's cute. gonna do that anyway you can have the token if you want but i think you're taking the emperor so let's do that ah double make disappear i've never felt more safe in my life all right so we can make disappear whatever they do now and then we can go shelly with make disappear up and if that ain't enough to win a motherfucking game against domain i don't know what is Bold. Bold with the migration. What you got? Also not bad. Do 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 do. That five six Shelley life. Come at me. You're going to need everything if you want to get through this. I have to feel like they got lucky and drew another ley line, right? Either way, this has to happen. Hopefully they didn't draw a lay line, because if so, we probably lose this game. It's weird how fast it can go from an unmitigated dub into a, a loss just on the basis of some hot draws off a of domain. Oh, never mind. Good game. We'll take it. And into Mythic we go. Hey, I got a little lazy and that took a while to get to. Sorry. All right, let's take a look at this deck. Actually, let's see. Where do we start in Mythic? 94%? Okay, we fucked around a little too much. That's clear. Everybody's on this domain list. Good God. Like if everybody's going to go on that domain list, are we better off just running Esper Legends so that we have Fairy Masterminds for up the Beanstalks and really present more pressure? Also, is that second Elspeth Smite really correct? It feels a little greedy. feels a little greedy in my soul. Uh, do we want the second Anoint with Affliction or the third Destroy Evil? Do we even want Farewell on a list like this? Or is that just... Can't imagine it being the right call, right? Let's take a look at Esper Legends. Well, bright side, I don't mind messing with the world champions list because I disagree with a lot of the slots. Huzzah. Um, okay, so if they go that route, one, two, three. Yeah, I'm just going to put two duress in here. Because I would like to have that. I'm also super unsure that Rona deserves a second slot in this list. I think I'd rather have the full play set of Fairy Mastermind because I expect to see way more of that up the Beanstalk and this is the best card against it. Yeah, this is more the style I think I'd aim for. A little disruption, a little bit of love. All right, let's see what the world champ list looks like. Let's take it for a fucking spin, shall we?
All right, if we rank up in 30 minutes into the top 1,200, I'm going to laugh. I don't think it's possible, just given length of games and the fact that I need to win like eight in a row to get there, but I mean, the eight in a row is technically possible. It's more so the amount of time. Either way, for everybody who's stuck around, appreciate you keeping the company. Uh, but up, 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 up. This feels risky as fuck, and yet at the same time, we treat these as spells. I mean, we're missing a two drop, but otherwise this is a clean curve with action at the top end that we can still fuck. You know what? Let's try it. Let's try it. Sometimes you just have to try these kinds of hands and figure out, I mean, never punished. All right, Danik, here we go. Just got to figure out if these hands are actually keepable, you know? Like, are we going to have regrets about it? I don't know. Well, that's not great. Didn't like our, didn't like our uh, Skrelves. Somebody is bitter about worlds. Jesus Christ. Sometimes when we nut, they nut just like that. Aha, two threats, motherfucker. Don't be shielded. Why not a third virtue? Oh my god. That is a lot of fuck you to aggro right there. And like at least one too many of these. Are they just green? Black ramp? Is that where we're at? No idea what they're trying to do here. We we need to keep our tie back for a moment. Fuck no to that. Okay, now we are on a hardcore quick clock. All right, give us give us the the free stuff, precious. Give us the free stuff. Yeah, I think we're going into just balls to the wall here, right? Okay, so they're at 14. We need to put on a one-turn clock here. Is Thalia necessary? I don't think we need the Thalia. I don't think that actually benefits us here. I think we want the Ottawara. Um, yeah, let's let's wait. As much as I want to pull Shelly back there, if they go Virtue, we just bounce the Virtue, and we've got... Yeah. That's why. Yes. Okay. Is this target? Put target creature. So it just turns it off anyway. Fuck them. Nice virtue. That doesn't work. Anyway. Fuck off. Okay, it might have been greedy. If we had done it slightly different, we go Iganjo, we Ottawar back the Urtai, we counter with Urtai, we win the game. We didn't play the Thalia. We got greedy. We assumed they just didn't have a way to deal with that. Um, one, two, three, four, five. God, that's awkward. I hate it when we play misplay legends. Uh, yeah, 
we still have to go that route. Like, we're still in this game, but we had the win, and we didn't see it. And that's... Hmm. Got a counter. Got a counter. Yep. No to that. Yep. They should have swung there. We're just doing an Aganjo. Like, they should block the Denik. We Aganjo. Okay, or there. Doesn't matter. All right. If they have nothing relevant in hand, we win? Sometimes that happens, right? Some, sometimes it's... <laughs> sometimes they just have Sunfalls on Sunfalls. Okay. Oh, Jesus. Nope. Okay, we missed our window, and that's on us. Now let's rip them apart in the post. I would say let's not play Denik, but like, fuck the way they're playing. Let's. Probably one less Dahlia, though. Right? I feel like we need all the ways to catapult our speed. And these are too fucking good to ignore. Hey, what up, Louis Dragon? You guys going live in about, what, 27 minutes? Something like that? Yep. Max got exoed by slobs. Fucking stream labs got him good, unfortunately. I was really looking forward to the set. Well, I am the kind of motherfucker that keeps a hand like this. It's a little sloppy if they get ahead, but I don't know. This no, this is sloppy. Well, that's worse. Okay, guess we'll start at five. Oh my god, that's not how you want these things to go. Yep. Sometimes it starts like that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't fuck with slobs. I'm on VMix, but I would do OBS if I didn't have access. Okay, it's uh, time to get Shelly down and hope a disdainful stroke is all we need to win the game. Not where you want to be. <laughs> Sometimes you fuck up game one. And so the only way to possibly win is to say you don't have it for one turn and just pray that that's right. I don't think it's right, though. I'm pretty sure we're getting a Leyline binding right in the Shelly. That's even worse. Leyline, we could at least Ottawara back. Hmm. Awkward. Awkward. Sure. Little Courier's briefcase action, why not? Can I hit them ten times in a row with a mastermind? <laughs> no velocity here. You never know. Yeah, we have to say no to that. Make them think we have a counter spell. We don't, but we have to bluff it. Have to make them think for a moment. Big brain moment.
That doesn't help. Okay. Yeah, I think we have to go this route. We're not out of it yet, but things don't look great. We'll put it that way. That's why we go this route, though. Archangel would be rough. Sunfall would be very rough. Really shouldn't have punted game one. Would have had an interesting set. Maybe we shouldn't have mulligan. I don't know. I feel like we should have mulligan. It was a five land hand and not even close to enough action. The mulligans felt right. The loss is on me. Let's keep their clock off. What you got? Jesus, and there's a Traxa coming down next turn. Yeah, no, that seals it. We can't deal with the Traxa. Once the Traxa comes down, that's the end. We need to have enough pressure to win the following turn. Okay, Esper Legends. A little disappointing there, not going to lie. Let's try that again. Going up against JZO. Did you pronounce that Jizzo? Who knows? Who knows? Technically, this is acceptable. I don't love it, but. Don't think we're playing a Thalia out preemptively here. You can you can swing. That's fine. Also fine. Special offsuit of Jello, Jizzo. <laughs> Fair. Let's dump Rafine out here. See what they have. My hope is they just go into Shelly. Okay, well, sometimes they have something cleaner. Yep, three points of damage. We're not going to worry about this. The old misery shadows. Aggressive. Very aggressive.
Let's see what they do. Nothing. Okay. You can pump it all day long. Don't even care a little. That's not the card I have to stop. Whatever you play next is what I have to deal with. Okay. Guess we're getting a scroll. Okay, so they should kill something in response. Whether they do or don't is kind of a question, but they should. Blocks her tie. No, not blocking her tie. Okay. Can't swing without it. Yep, cut down won't work there. Done. Bam. Got. Okay, so I'm on a black. Way too many misery shadows. Jesus. Wedding announcements. You're coming in. Um, do we seriously not have any? Okay, we we don't have any way to deal with that. That's interesting. Uh, but up, 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 uh. What do we want? What do we not want? What do we want? What do we not want? Rona, you are fucking slow. Um, we keep the fairy masterminds, right? Evasion and all that? I don't know. It also seems kind of clunky here. Like, I get rid of Urtai's, but we have to kill Shelly. And they combo with mastermind. Two cards have to go, chat. Two cards have to fucking go. I don't think we can afford to lose Lord Skit. Like, it's fine to have 10 three drops. It's fine to have six here. It's got to be a couple masterminds. This is probably their weakest matchup. Like, Skrelv's great in this matchup. It forces the early removal, or else it turns off the rest. We're totally fine with that. I guess we typically go into AO against them, too, just for the value. Yeah, it's probably just lose the masterminds and, like, really go up the curve a little bit. Let's try this. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued as whether as to whether this is the right plan. It's much grindier. I feel like this is what we designed, or I should say Jean-Emmanuel de Pra designed the sideboard to do. Oh, mulliganing that shit. Um, not great. We'll keep it. We're on the draw. They should have... Okay. We might get out aggroed. That's a little concerning. It's a fucking problem. I don't know. They also have a lot of cards that require heavy mana sinks. Like, because of that mana sink, there's no two drop play here, right? Oh, are they like hyper aggro and I just didn't realize it? That's awkward. Okay, well, we'll wait for them to do pump the jam, pump it up. Die a lonely death. Can't let that happen. All right. We'll go this into Shelly, into AO, hopefully. We might go into Rafine. We'll see. Between these two. Kind of just depends on where we see them going. Misery does have a shadow. You're not wrong. Shelly it is. Force them to have removal at every turn. Gotta have it. Okay. 
Draw me a white source off the top, untapped, please. Ganja would be lovely, or Plaza of Heroes. It's a little awkward with Misery Shadow versus AO. That is a consideration I didn't give. Probably, if we get to a game three, uh, we're just boarding AO back down. It's got to be here. Because wedding announcement, right? Get the extra creature. Get the insulation. That's awkward. It's very, very, very awkward. Right. Don't play Denic pre combat if you're going to Lord Skitter. That's awkward, too. It doesn't really make a difference. They're not recurring here. But it sure ain't great, you know? Hey, what up, Caleb? How goes it? We're just fucking around in Mythic for a little bit. The streamer showdown didn't quite get to happen. Stream Labs crashed on Max's end and refused to budge. So here we are doing this instead. Down goes Misery Shadow for Adenic. I will take that trade. Not happily, but like, what you gonna do? You know what I mean? Another Denic. Again, do it post combat. Jesus Christ, I gotta work on my sequencing. It's a little embarrassing, Chad. Just a little embarrassing. Oh, uh, yeah, why not conceal some curtains? Blow out that AO in my hand. Do the challenge today? What was the challenge today? Is there, like, on Modo? Or is there a challenge on arena that i'm completely missing it if you're talking about like the midweek challenge i think i did that at like ass o'clock in the morning for funsies i don't know why you don't take the ao there but thank you makes zero pennies but i'm all about it frankly do we need to go deeper on seacrim coast or do we we're not in an ideal situation here, Chad. I mean, we can get an Urtai off this and blow out a Shelly. Boo. Not a May effect to draw. That's a bit awkward. That'll do it. All right, let's go to game three. Streamer challenge between you and Max. Yeah, we were going to, but Streamlabs uh, KO'd itself, which in turn kind of face-fucked that idea, which was unfortunate because I was looking forward to it. Okay. They're more hyper echo than we thought they were. Definitely don't want to blow out our go for the throats on not shieldreds. Um... Probably go down one on each of these. Yeah, let's push it this way. Did not realize they were that low to the ground. Once you see Okiba wrecking a raid, you're just like, ah, fuck. All right, hyper aggro black. Demon black, basically. Again, I don't love it, but I don't hate it, so we're going to do it. Like, this is a, just too land heavy, but it curves, and it's got durable threats. And we have Rafine in our deck, right? So we've got options. We've got ways to get through all this shit. Unless this is turn one duress. If it's turn one duress, we're so fucking fucked. We have to, like, top deck hot as the sun if they turn one duress us. 
Oh my god, they have a turn one duress. Holy fuck, we're so fucked. <laughs> it's gotta be a concealed curtains, right? Ah, uh, evolve sleeper. We can deal with that. Sort of. Not really. Okay, deck. I need a Rafine off the top. So badly. So badly. This is Rafine or bust territory. But if we get a Rafine. Oh, that's sweet, sweet Raffy. Then we've got a shot. We we honestly we threw the Thalia out as bait. Uh, we want them to kill it so we can wedding announcement next turn. We just want to force the cut down here. That's the point of it. Okay, not what's happening though. All right, deck can't be land. Fuck, it's another land. <laughs> this is why I hate this Esper deck. <laughs> okay, it's fine, chat. Sometimes it be like this. I'm 2-0 with Esper Midrange and going to be 0-2 with Esper Legends, and that should tell you all you need to know about how bad I am at piloting Esper Legends. Fuck your shit. That dies. I am the aggro. Look at me. I am the aggro now. You're not dumb enough to block, right? That would sort of be the dumbest thing you could do here. All right, here we go. They go Shelly, we go go for the throat, and maybe that's good enough. Probably not. Yep, you swing. We don't care. We have to win this race. Fuck you. God damn. Yep. Okay. Throat goat's gone. And a 3 4 menace is born. Just go over the road to bus. Yep. And we draw more lands. Arguably, we shouldn't have played the plaza there, but I do kind of want to keep these in hand in case we top deck a Rafine, and I do want to extend that plaza out. So, yeah, we're just rolling with it. Okay, deck. We are at top deck hot as the sun or get fucked. We're certainly capable of top decking hot as the sun. I believe in us. Not by a lot, though. Just like ambition, you know what I mean? All right, Jizzo. What you got? I don't know how else to pronounce JZO other than Jizzo. And I have no remorse about it, because frankly, they chose that name for themselves. Yep, they're Shelly. Just makes me wish I was playing Domain. <laughs> okay. Well, welcome to swinging to draw a card like, with a Shelly on board. We desperately need another card here, though. We need to find a way to deal with Shelly, or this game ends quickly and not favorably. I mean, this is literally part two of Shelly takes over the game solo. I think it's going to be Thalia. They have go for the throat. We, we died a horrible, horrible death. Okay. You double swing Shelly, I will block. Still can't swing through. That's nice. Well, 
Bye bye, misery. Okay, one of these needs to be another go for the throat sitting in the sideboard. Like, we should have our fourth go for the throat. This is a little silly. All right. Gentlemen, you are the pro. You really did run hot as the sun. This list does not feel like it's actually that good. But I do think the Esper Midrange list is hot fire. Really, really, really awkward there, too. Like, we're holding them off, but not for much longer. This might be the last draw of the game for me. Ottawa is not going to fucking do it. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight land drops, nine, ten lands. Ten lands in 16 cards. Brutal. Brutal. So they feel to ruin the Plaza of Heroes on end step, right? I feel like that's where they go. And we still can't cut down the Misery Shadow in that scenario. Okay, that seems like a mistake too on not just field ruining it out. I mean, we're just going to bounce Misery Shadow. Oh, well, there's a very narrow, specific sequence of events that allows me to have a shot. Starts with drawing a go for the throat right fucking now. Yeah, I know where's Max. Are our uh, next round competitors ready to be rated out to? And who am I rating out to, Max? Sleeveless MTG? Okay. That I can do. Ooh. Shelly for Shelly. Fucking game on. Let's go. Let's see if we can bait him. Just go back and forth. Right? Just bait him. We'll totally fall for it, chat. Don't worry about it. Oh, fuck off. You should have gone for it with the Field of Ruin. We both know that. Ain't that some shit? Okay. All right. You sure are going to have to pump that.
Okay, don't have removal. I don't know. They should have field of ruins this like three turns ago. So if they actually lose because of this, fucking deserved. Okay. So you're saying there's a chance. It's a little weird that there's a chance. Weirdly, a land that actually matters. Kind of funny. All right, so Lord Skidder takes down Tenacious. We still can't swing. Bye-bye to Tenacious. Lord Skidder, look at you doing some fucking work. Okay, if we win on a 12 land draw, I'm going to feel jubilant? Exuberant? I don't know. Like the luckiest son of a bitch? I how else do you put it? Hey, you're not supposed to know that trick. You fucking failed that trick so many times over. Probably we should have sacrificed it just to make sure they couldn't get another swamp, but... Yeah. The amount it matters is pretty low. Dark stream, sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, what's up, Louis? Yeah, uh, okay. That's because the sleeve sleeveless can't hear me. Uh, I think it's not on my end. Well, if sleeveless can't hear you, it's definitely on his end. Okay. Uh, Thanks. You, what, what he's. What Sleeveless is going to want to do is go into their Discord settings and modify accordingly because they probably have it routed to the wrong place. You yeah, wanna, like You got to route it directly into your headphones or else it, it just doesn't. Like, if you leave it at default, it goes nowhere. You just have to route it right into your headphones. Okay, I will write him. Sorry, man, for burning you. No, no, you're fine. I'm getting my ass kicked right now. We're Gucci. <laughs> the world is watching. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm changing. I'll see if it can work. All right. Shieldred attacks. Yes. Okay. My opponent does know what they're doing. I need to go for the throat off the top. Or an Urtai, I guess, to be shitty, but still decent. I don't know. One, two, three, work. That's an Urtai. We're in it, baby. There's not really a point in waiting. Fuck your Shelly. Okay, chat, we weirdly have lethal on board, so if they have no action in three cards here, if it's just Swamp, Swamp, Swamp... God damn it, they had another Shelly. <laughs> Motherfucker. Oh. Just gonna, just gonna cry over here for a moment, like, why are you not another go for the throat? Why the fuck do we have four cut downs and only three go for the throats? Oh. Chat, this is not how this game is played. All right, let's wish him a good game. Little, little kissy face. If that was a go for the throat, it would have been the best troll ever. I stand by that. All right, we're raiding out. We are heading over to Sleeveless MTG. The streamer showdown challenge is happening. We are ready to fucking rock. All right, it's going to be a good time. Come with me. We're going to go watch this together. It's going to be Sleeveless MTG, it's going to be Louis Dragon MTG. All the fucking MTG. Yeah, Urtai for the loss. No shit, Andrew. <laughs> All right, gang. I'm I'm rolling with you to the next spot. Here's the outro, and let's go welcome everybody to the 